Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be covering a very cool action shot. Um, we're basically going to be rotating around our um, our helmet here, which I downloaded this model off of CG Trader, and we're going to create some really cool background blur. And you guys will see what I mean in just a moment. So the very first thing I'm going to do is kind of start setting up my scene here. I'm going to head over to Cycles, GPU. As you can see, we already have some textures on our helmet. It's looking fantastic. I'm going to delete the light source, and I'm just going to add in an HDRI right now. Uh, HDRI, and I'll choose something with like a, a kind of more complicated background, maybe something like this. This looks good to me. And then I'm going to take my camera, go back into solid mode. I'm just going to zero every single thing out here, and then I'm going to rotate it on the 90 degree axis on the X, and I'm going to bring it back on the Y here. Now I'm going to snap to my camera view, um, and then it looks like actually looks like our our helmet guy is not centered so let me move him on the X make him more centered there cool all right now I'm gonna bring my camera up and I'm gonna bring it back a little bit more now if we go to our rendered view you can see that we're directly facing our helmet so this is looking really really good so far now we're gonna want to rotate around our helmet so how do we actually do that let's add an empty so I'm gonna add in an empty plane axis scale it on up and then i'm going to click on my camera shift click my empty control p enter so we're going to parent the camera to the empty so now if we rotate our empty you'll see that the camera follows with it which is fantastic let's uh with our empty selected let's pull up our timeline down here a little bit um, i'm on frame one i'm going to insert a keyframe for the rotation head over to frame 120 and then i am going to do 360 for our Z and insert that and I'm gonna make my end frame 120 now as you can see our helmet disappeared and that is because I believe our helmet is keyframed as well or something something is keyframed here that's not supposed to be I believe there's an empty controlling our helmet yep there is so I'm gonna go ahead and bring our helmet right back to the center here and we should be good to go Cool, all right, just ignore all the stuff that I just did. That was because this is from a previous project. But as you guys can see, we're now rotating around our object. And this is really, really good because this is exactly what we want. Um, another thing we wanna do is click on our empty and we actually wanna highlight the keyframes on the timeline, right click, interpolation mode, linear. So now uh, we should be good to go. We just need to move this first frame or this first keyframe over to frame zero so that we have a full loop. And as you guys can see, when I play this back, we have a full loop. Now, how do we make, how do we give this some motion blur? Well, we'll enable motion blur. Over in our render properties, just click on this little checkbox where it says motion blur, and we're doing good so far. But another thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my camera, I am going to enable depth of field, I'm gonna select a piece on my helmet, and then I'm gonna bring this value way down to like 0.2. Now, in terms of the actual motion blur, um, we're gonna have to test this value out, but I'm just gonna give myself 100 samples and do a quick render and see what kind of motion blur we're getting right now. We shouldn't be getting too much motion blur, but let's just take a look. All right, so we're not getting too much motion blur in the background, I can already tell. So let's really bring this thing to the next level. How do we really get a lot of motion blur here? Well, there's two ways we're gonna do this. First of all, we're gonna back the camera up way, 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 way far away from our object. And, and again, we're on frame one here. I'm gonna zoom in my camera lens really, really far into my object here. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to make sure that we're really, really far away. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow us to get that really intense background blur effect. I'm also gonna to have to fine tune my f-stop here to maybe like one. Now, another thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to make this uh, 60 uh, frames in total, and I'm gonna click on my empty, and I'm gonna drag that last keyframe to frame 60. So now, as you can see, we're rotating much faster around our object. So if we were to take any frame like this one and render that out, we should have a much more intense motion blur in the background. As you can see, we do. If you compare this frame to our viewport, you can see that everything is blurred and the motion blur is really, really high. Now another thing we can do to increase this effect even more is go under our motion blur and we can um, mess with this shutter value as well. So if we make it something like five 
and then we render this out, now look at the motion blur. It's even more intense, but you have to be careful with this value because you're actually going to mess up the actual helmet itself. So I'm gonna try something like one, and let's see, let's try this again. Let's go ahead and render that out. This is looking a lot better. Now, again, you're gonna get a little bit of motion blur. So what I'm gonna do is take my camera and give it an f-stop of like three maybe. And let's go ahead and render this and see what this looks like. Now, this is more like what we're looking for here. So now, if we were to render this whole thing out, what do you guys think this would look like? I'm very, very curious. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna render a very low resolution sample of this at 50%, and I'm gonna make my samples like 25 samples. Let's just do a quick test render. As you can see, that took about a second. So let's go ahead and render a quick PNG sequence into our temp folder. I'm gonna call this Halo. I'm just gonna type in helmet for the actual frames themselves. And then I'm gonna go to solid view, render animation, um, and let's just give this a second to go through every single frame. And once this is done, we'll come right back and see what the result is. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video here and come back when this is done. All right guys, so we are at frame 60 here. We are all done with our frames. Let's go ahead and click on file, new video editing and we are in our video editor here i'm going to click on add image sequence and i'm going to go ahead and locate my image sequence here i'm going to shift click all my frames import them now and like you guys remember we're at 60 frames here so we have all of our frames go ahead and make sure this is playing in the correct way and as you guys can see i actually think it's in reverse so i'm going to reverse the frames as you guys can see we have this really really cool effect here where, where basically we have a full loop around our helmet, but look at the background. Look how blurred and exaggerated it seems. This is how you achieve these really, really cool motion blur effects in the background. You can see that the actual helmet itself looks really good um, and it's crisp. Now again, this is a half res render, but I think this looks fantastic. Now we're at 24 frames a second. If we bump this up to 30, you can see it looks almost even smoother. And then if we try 60, it's gonna be really, really wicked fast. It's probably gonna be too fast, but I just wanted to show you guys the kind of options you have here. I think 30 frames a second looks pretty solid. Um, but again, this is how you get that really awesome background blur effect where it's kind of like almost streaky in a way. Now you can imagine if you had more elements in your scene, how, how cool this could look. Um, again, this is a half res render, so when you guys actually go to render, you're going to want to bump up your render settings and stuff like that. But notice how that background is blurring and it's really stretching out. That is because the camera is extremely far back from our subject. Um, we've got an HDRI as our background. Um, we've got some intense depth of field. Now, even if you didn't have the depth of field enabled, you would still get an effect like this. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys how to achieve this because... Um, in my head, I knew when we went into this how this was going to happen. Again, you mess with that shutter value. Um, just be careful because you can see there's a little bit of motion blur on our object itself. So if you guys don't want that to happen, back the camera up even more, zoom that lens in, enable that depth of field, um, and kind of mess with that shutter value. This is really all about experimenting and figuring out what values work best for your project. But again, that is our um, that is our effect, and I, I think it looks really really cool, and it can be used in a lot of different situations for different 3D projects. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I would be really excited to see if you guys will use this technique in any of your personal projects or any of your client projects. I hope you guys have a great day, and I will talk to you in the next tutorial.